Anin Nina Na Wemakina. It's a crazy one. Um, this being hello to all my relatives in Anishinaabemowin or Ojibwe. Um, now, looking through the dictionary, um, there are two different versions of um, the Anishinaabe language. One using these weird symbols that you saw at the top which is the original written form of the language um, that was uh, developed in the late 1800s and uh, continued on for a while. Um, the one at the bottom being the Romanized version um, of that original form, although it does not translate very well. Um, the Romanized version of this language as it is, as I've looked through it, is a mess. Uh, they attempted to kind of make it um, as simplified to an English-speaking uh, mind as possible with the lettering. And in that, they've made everything besides precise lettering ridiculously overcomplicated. Um, there's crossovers where sometimes nasal vowels are, are portrayed as doubled vowels, sometimes... Um, doubled vowels uh, don't actually sound like doubled vowels it, uh, and I can't really tell if the problem is that they've in so much of a haste to preserve the language have not really enforced a uh, strict adherence to the correct pronunciation or if the l written language itself is just broken um, but uh, Anyway, I haven't seen anyone uh, try to do the um, the symbol I, the symbol version, which is actually uh, much more common uh, than the other version, and for that reason, most likely, um, they don't pay that much attention to the Romanized version of the language because they already have this per perfectly fine uh, other alphabet, um, which is kind of um, developed from a version uh, that was created by a uh, Christian missionary for the Cree um, up in Canada. And there are different versions of the syllabaries. Um, I, I picked a specific one here um, that I'm going to show you how to do, and this is a syllabary. It's not necessarily an alphabet. Uh, the difference is um, an alphabet is like what you have in English where every single symbol represents a specific sound. A syllabary is like Japanese, where every uh, symbol means a syllable um, pronounced in the language. Uh, so this is the syllabary of the uh, Anishinaabemowin language, which is a language spoken primarily by the Ojibwe people and the Odawa people, uh, commonly also referred to as Chippewa, um, who call themselves collectively the Anishinaabek. Uh, the, re the reason that they um, call themselves that is again going back to the fact that they don't believe in organized leadership. And uh, in terms of that freedom and uh, each man living for his own gains and uh, nothing beyond that, really, um, the society developed a very high level of art, almost becoming the Ojibwes and Odawas, almost becoming kind of the Greeks of the Native American world, uh, forming a society very similar, actually, um, in social structure to the way the Greeks were uh, immediately uh, preceding the rise of the um, classical Greek civilization that we know of. Um, and at, in that, they were also very self-depreciating, again, where the word Anishinaabe comes from. In fact, they even called all of their lands collectively Anishinaabeki, or uh, Anishinaabe land, um, distinct, using the names Ojibwe and Odawa to distinguish between the two. And you also have the uh, Potawatomi, actually named um, by the Ojibwe, um, is where that the name Potawatomi comes from, but um, they call themselves the Nishinaabe or the Little Anishinaabe, um, and are part of the uh, the same um, culture group in that general area. Um, and you you see other uh, ways that they're kind of self depreciating humor comes through in the use of using uh, Nana Bojo or sometimes just the shortened version Bojo. Um, as a greeting, 
Uh, Nana Bojo is a character who is an idiot, who always um, screws things up, who always does the wrong thing before doing the right thing. Um, and there are countless stories about his uh, his misadventures, kind of, in, um, uh, in uh, Ojibwe and Odawa lore. Um, however, people, because of the, the stupidity of that character, people started using that word as a friendly um, insult, kind of. If you think someone did something stupid or is being stupid, you kind of hit them upside the head and call them Nana Bojo. Um, so in that, they created, uh, uh, kind of started using it as a code, so that when they would approach someone um, in the distance, you shout Nana Bojo at them, and if they think it's funny, then they're probably friendly, and if they get pissed, they're probably an enemy. So um, that's kind of where that came from. Now this may get a little bit overcomplicated, but uh, here you are, Anishinaabe Moin Ojibi Ganon, uh, which uh, this is how you you would pretty much spell that in the language. There's a it's divided into twelve sets with seven vowels and then uh, eight forms to each of the remaining eleven consonants. Um, some of the symbols kind of overlap, representing multiple different consonants. Like uh, um, well, you'll you'll see when we get into it. But um, th this is the basic uh, way that it's set up. Okay, these are your basic vowels. You have the E, pronounced E, which is represented as a triangle pointed down. I, pronounced E, which is represented as a triangle pointed up. O, pronounced O, which is represented as a triangle pointed to the right. A, pronounced A, which is a triangle pointed to the left. Uh, double I, which is pronounced E, which is a triangle pointed up with a dot over it. Uh, the double O pronounced U, which is a triangle pointed to the right with a dot over it. And double A, which is just a an elongated A, ah, which is a, a triangle pointed to the left with a dot over it. And um, that that is kind of... Um, how easy it is to kind of uh, learn the languages because every set is just kind of a reorganization of the same symbol portrayed in different ways. Um, just kind of in a similar manner to how uh, Japanese works in, on some level. Japanese is a lot different than this um, writing system, but it's the same basic idea. And now you have your P series, which is also the B's, um, by the way. Which is um, pa, pi, po, pa, p, er, p, pu, pa, and then the basic p just by itself is um, represented as the chevron pointed uh, left, but the um, letters that appear by themselves are superscripted, which means you write it real tiny up in the top corner of the, uh, the line at, at the end. Okay, T-series. Te, te, to, ta, ti, tu, ta, and just the T by itself, t. And now we have, uh, K-series. Ke, ke, ko, ka, ki, ku, ka, and the K by itself. Your CHs, che, chi, cho, cha, chi, chu, cha, and CH by itself. The M set, me, mi, mo, ma, mi, mu, ma, and M. The N set, Ne, ni, no, na, ni, nu, na, and n. Okay, here is your S and Z series. Se or ze, si or zi, so or zo, sa or za, si or zi, 
Su or Zu, Sa or Za, and S or Z. Okay, the Sh and Z series. Uh, Z usually being ZH in this language, although in many others it's usually J. But um, we have Sh and Z, 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 and S H. Or and um, sh or j by itself. We have our y's ye, ye, yo, ya, ye, you, ya, and y by itself. Our w's we, we, wo, wa, we, wu, wa, and w by itself. And then the H's. He, he, ho, ha, he, who, ha, and then the H or glottal stop. Okay, so that is uh, kind of what we have there for that. Um, I'll be working on some more stuff with this uh, language as we go on, and I'll be teaching uh, hopefully in both a um, romanized form and a syllabic form. So, um, until then, until then, uh, miigwech, ginwa, gibizindamnin, mi iwuf.